Hello and welcome to the video. This is how I've built out my Chapito here. This is the TBS Chapito that I've had for a little while now. I've been building it out over the last week or so. And it's finally in a state now where we have, if I take the top off, we have the flight controller, we have the GPS, we have the Walksdale FPV system here in the nose. It's all wired up and all configured. And I know that quite a few of you have been interested in how I'm getting on with this and what my thoughts are. Now, the next video is going to be a maiden flight and we'll see how it actually flies. Um, I think I'll talk about my plans for the maiden flight at the end of the video. But in this one, it's more about talking about two specific things. I'll put time codes down below. First and foremost is what I've done to the foam. You will notice that on mine, the tail can actually be removed. Why? Well, I've made that modification so that the motor mount can be slid out the back because it's held in place with a vertical spar in the tail, which keeps that rigid. But also there is a rear horizontal spar that keeps the wings in place that holds it as well. I potentially want to play around with different motor selections, so I have made that mod. I'll show you how I've done it. Apart from that, I haven't really done a lot of other things. It's gone together extremely well. You'd certainly hope so. Um, and I'm kind of excited to get in the air. But enough waffling on. Let's get and show you, first of all, what I've done with the foam and how you put it together. It's pretty easy and straightforward. And then also get into a little bit more detail showing how the electronics and everything fit together. There is something a little bit odd. If you've already watched the video before, you'll have noticed it. The output are configured in a weird way. It's not weird, it's unusual, I guess, in that uh, servo output 7 is for the attached ESC that runs the motor, and output servos 1 and 2, which would usually in INRB be for motors, are actually for the two servos. So, let's get into the weeds and have a look at the foam first. So, in terms of actually putting the wing together, it isn't particularly tricky. Here it is all in one piece. There are only a handful of adaptations that I've done. The main one is in this vertical stabilizer. When I put it together, one of the first things I did, I actually glued this bottom half in place. Uh, this bottom tail piece is pretty solid. I want that as it's going to be taking strikes from the ground to be pretty resilient. I may put a little bit of tape over here just to protect it, but I did put that on there with Yuhu Pour. The top, however, I have thought about mounting a, in a little bit more because the motor mount that's here will slide out the back so long as the spar that goes from the top to the bottom part of the tail and the rearward spar here for the wing are both removed. And I potentially want to be able to change the motor out here at the back. So I've made it so that this tail piece is removable. How have I done that? Well, a couple of things. Uh, there is space inside the tail to have one of the things like the crossfire antennas actually mounted in here. So there's a four millimeter, just over four millimeter uh, shaft here, and also the recess that's inside. Hopefully you can see that. Now, what I did is I got myself some four millimeter carbon fiber, cut it to length and have glued it in there. So both those spars are actually glued in and they're gonna push down through the two holes in the tail into the bottom part of the tail and be part of what's gonna lock the motor and receiver assembly uh, in place. However, I wasn't just gonna rely on that. At the moment, it's quite stiff in its own right. If I just put that in the hole, you can see you can kind of hold everything. You're probably spotted. What I've done is I've also cut out and sunk neodymium magnets, both here into the front of it and also here into the recess. And what that means is when this thing slides home, goes through that piece, you get that nice snick and I can lift it up and shake it around without any problem at all. So two big benefits of that. One, this will come off for packing and transport, but also it allows me to get access to the motor mount. Uh, nothing has changed inside of here. Um, the way that the wings are held in place is will with this, let me just put this on the floor because you need to pull it a little bit, with this kind of rubber ring. So there's no spares of that, make sure you don't lose that. And then the wings will kind of just pull off like that. Now, in terms of the wing setup, the control horn is already glued in and nicely done. Uh, this is more or less the right length. All you have to do to put the servo in is 
I would 90 degree it with a servo checker, make sure it's 1500, fit the servo arm. I'm not sure if I've got the final or um, the pre-production versions of the arms. I've gone for the third hole down here. Um, when that's cut off, it's almost flush with the top of the wing. I would probably recommend going for the second hole out if you want maximum deflection, if you're going to have this as an aerodynamic flip and roller. But um, I've gone for the third hole out and we'll see what it's like when I actually fly it. The only thing you have to do is just open up the hole in the servo arm with a little pin drill, just like you would normally. Uh, the nice thing is, and just be aware of this, these are all ball joints here out on the control surface. The control surface does have carbon fiber reinforcement in here. Um, but what I've done, I noticed, is that this little ball, rather than it just being loose around the screw and the nylon nuts that holds it in place, has actually got a bit of a thread on it. So you have to kind of screw the thread into the little ball and then push it through and then put your nylon nut on the end. Just be careful of that. With that taken off, then I can remove the rearward spar. That then now releases the motor mount and that then slides out. And this is why I've done the tail adaptation. Now the motor is going to mount on here and the motor wires are going to run underneath. There is this space then at the top, which is where you could absolutely put your receiver with the antennas coming up in here. I'm probably not gonna do that. I'm using a diversity antenna. I probably want my antennas in a more V configuration and there are other places on the model that it'll fit. But with the way that I've set this up, that means that I can change the motor in the future. And all I need to do is just slide this back into place, put the rearward spar into position. That's going to lock it. So at that point, I can't pull it out. But then also with the tail, that's additional locking for both the tail and stability and stiffness of the tail. But it also means that that motor mount's not going anywhere. And then the other thing I'll, I'll just comment on here, and I hadn't realized this and started putting this together. This spar that goes all the way through, looks like, what, eight mil spar, something like that? I haven't actually measured it. It's incredibly long. It goes quite a way into the wing, longer than I expected. So to put the wing on, you kind of slide it in, make it so that it goes over the rear spar post, your servo cable through the hole and then slide the whole thing in. Once it's in, then you need to find that O-ring that you haven't lost, pop it over the hook on one side, over the hook on the other, and there we have, it's all ready to go. So it breaks down beautifully. So with that all said, then we can think about where everything's going to go. I put the two extension leads on here that the servo cables are gonna plug into. This is going to mount in its position here at the back. The motor is going to be bolted onto that tray and slid in. Then we have the power cables coming forward. I'm probably gonna put the GPS on top like that. And I'm probably gonna put the receiver out on the other side with potentially having the antennas at that kind of 45 degree that I like, probably just in front of the spar like that with just the tips pointing through. Then they're away as far as I can get them from some of the other carbon fiber stuff. So let me do that quickly and we'll come back and have a look. So in my build, the place that I started was actually installing the motor onto the motor mount, pushing the wires and or the motor mount through and then they pop out here where the flight controller is, just at the back. And uh, there's not a massive amount of room, but there is just enough room to plug it into the back of the flight controller. Then it was a case of pushing the flight controller into place. Make sure that you've cut off the rear two tabs. It'll slide in position. It's very, very snug in here. So you have to make sure that you are um, making sure that no cables are being nipped. Once it's in position, it'll be held in place by two screws. Those are part of the kit. Oh, well, remember, um, don't forget, I would recommend putting some form of thread lock on the screws that are going through the motor mount. I did it here just for safety so the motor mount doesn't come loose. I haven't got the prop on uh, completely yet because I'm still doing uh, the final little bits of setup. The nice thing is, is look, 
when the tail is on the ground, the prop is clear. So that should hopefully, with the supply prop, avoid prop strikes for those of you that are interested in that. Once it was in place, then my next big decision was, well, where do the antennas go? Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of carbon around here, so trying to get them completely out of the way is a bit tricky. But I've got my receiver here on the left-hand side as you're looking at it. So the cables come forward and I have just two dabs of hot glue poked a little hole through each side and I have my Diversity Express LRS receiver antennas mounted that way. Just the nubbins come through the top. Hopefully that isn't going to be too much drag. I have mounted using double-sided foam tape the USB beeper board on here. So that is on this side. And then the cables from the wings are plugging into the two extension cables, which are marked. Again, these two extensions need to be plugged into servos one and servos two in order for them to make the right connection. But once they're all together, took that away, then that's most of that work done. Next thing to do then was to install the two cables that are going to run forward to my HD FPV kit. There is a channel that sits underneath this board um, that you can run cables in. Uh, I've chosen to run my signal cable from the VTX port for the Walksnail unit underneath and that then plugs in the front and I've run my power cable up here along the side. It's just an old habit of mine. I always run power and signal separately just to avoid them talking to each other. Just held them in place with a couple of dabs of black hot glue again. In terms of the HDFPV kit, now this was pretty easy to install because this cage is so versatile. Um, let me talk a little bit about how I've done it. Those two connectors that I have on the cables that run up here to the front, uh, one is for power, which is currently plugged in. Um, I unplug that when I plug everything in. It's just an old habit. All my planes have it. It also means that this unit is theoretically removable very, very easily. But I have had to modify the cage that came at the front for the Walksnell unit so I could put it in without having to undo the camera and stuff. I've cut the bottom spar off it so that the camera can just go forward and the cable doesn't have to be cut. Uh, but here it is all installed. I'm using a version one of the Walksnell kit. I happen to have one of these left over. So I'm popping it in here for the maiden flight. Uh, had to use a little bit of space and material between the camera. The camera is 19 millimeters wide and the width of this was, I think it was 20.4 millimeters. So I 3D printed a couple of, I think they were 0.7 millimeter shims each side for the camera. And then the actual unit itself is held in place with a zip tie on top of a little bit of wood just to allow a little bit of airflow behind it as well. I have cut out a couple of recesses at the top and bottom for the zip tie, that means that it can slide into place without the zip tie getting in the way of anything else. That then means that I have um, installed the antennas here. Uh, there isn't a natural place to install the antennas. I was thinking very hard about whether to use the Menace RC Aeropods. They're perfect for things like this. Um, there wasn't kind of a flat enough place for it to go on. This is a very rounded chassis. So I have just, um, hopefully you can see here, just kind of cut a line and put the antennas in. I've not glued them in um, because they can see how they perform when they're pushed in like that, but hopefully that will minimize the amount of drag. Last thing then is once that's all done, just a case of putting in and gluing in this piece. Again, using Yoohoo Pour, popping it into position uh, with a battery strap underneath it, and then putting two great big whacking batteries on top to hold it all in place. But as you can see here, everything fits uh, just. It's all ma made to go together. The flight controller fits great. Again, I've put the GPS on the top. That seems to be still working fine. That wouldn't be where I'd put it if it was gonna be used with a magnetometer. I'd probably try and put it well away from all the electricity that's flowing around in here and the power distribution board and ESC that's underneath. But I think that should be fine for iNav. Speaking of iNav, now I have the servos all installed and configured, I can very quickly tweak the output settings so that the servos are moving correctly. They need to be 50 millimeters up and 50 millimeters down for aileron and 12 millimeters up and down for pitch control. Mine are moving way, way too much, so I've had to change a couple of things in iNav to get them to those magic numbers 
from TPS. First of all, I had to reduce the overall travel down to 70% rates for Servo 1 and Servo 2 to calm them down. And then I sadly also had to reduce the weight a little bit in both the roll and pitch, as you can see here on the screen, to get the 15 and 12 millimeters respectively. Again, that's using the third hole on the servos. So ignore what I said about maybe needing to go further out. The third hole on the servo will give you shed loads of control service movement, way more than you're actually going to need. So I'm pretty happy that I went for the third hole because that's reasonably aerodynamic. So there you have it. Mine is now built. Very excited to get this out to fly. Just need to wait for a nice calm day, charge battery and a flying buddy to act as moral support and operate the hat cam. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, my plan for the Maiden for this is, um, although this is really designed for minimum 3S, really four to six S batteries, I am probably gonna Maiden mine in 4S and we'll see how she performs. Uh, weight on this, because I know some of you will be interested. The weight of the model, uh, that battery hatch is eight grams. I know because I've weighed it. The whole thing without a battery is 399 grams. So my battery that I'm gonna use is 182 grams. So that gives me a total of 581 grams, if my math is correct. Just checking my scribbled notes in front of me. 581 grams is not a bad weight for a wing of this size. The lighter you can keep it, the more floaty it's going to be. Lots of other people will be flying it on 6S because it's all advertised as going really quickly, but I know there's an awful lot of people being in contact with me who are interested in this being a backpackable model that is more versatile than just flying like you stole it, which is very much what the Mojito is all about. Hopefully the Chupito has a wider speed envelope, it's much more forgiving, and is more like a, a super duper atom dolphin style pro model. Um, these forward swept wings usually give fantastic flying characteristics, so I'm excited to see it. So stay tuned, make sure you liked and subscribed, and hopefully the next video will be a maiden where we'll actually see how this thing flies and what she's like on a 4S battery. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.